All right, the question here is, are you buying LeBron is happy with the Lakers front office? I'm buying it. Um, I think this is really wrapped around his status and his tenure in the league, being a veteran. Like, just in life, uh, old people, they make life simpler. <laughs> and they know exactly who they are, and they know exactly what they want. And they're happier because when you're young, you know, you waste a lot of time and energy on trying to win every single battle. And when you get older, you start to pick your battles a lot better and a lot wiser. So I respect LeBron James because he's probably not as adversarial as he was when he was young. Because when you're young and you're flexing, you know you're the man, you try to get it all. And I think LeBron's in a position where he realized, hey, I got the best record in the West. We're in the championship conversation. I got myself and AD, all-star starters. Sunny skies, production cr company's booming. My son is killing it. Like, what else is there to complain about? I think he has a different way of assessing this situation as he came here for reasons outside of basketball reasons. This is results of it. Yeah, I don't know if he's happy with the front office. I think he's happy with his life. I think, and where the Lakers front office and where basketball sits in that universe isn't the same as it was before. Now, was he, is he happier with the Lakers than he was with the Cavaliers? He ran the Cavaliers. As a young gun, he ran the Cavaliers. Who he wanted on the team plane was on the team plane. When they practiced, the whole deal. He had the full run of that place. Mm. He didn't have it in Miami. But I just look at it in this situation now, and again, he's got a lot of say-so when it comes to the Lakers. I just feel as if it's not as important to him. The reality is, if he was still gunning for championships, then he would be unhappy mm -hmm. because they haven't been able to do all the things necessary to put him in the driver's seat. I just don't, uh, from, from all the decisions made to be here, it was about his family, it was yeah. about his production company, where he wanted his kids to go to school, all of that. So. It's secondary. Is he happy? No. But does he have to be? I feel like the answer for him is not necessarily. Well, when you look at this, look, we can all say now at the midway point here, yeah, he should be happy. They have the best record in the league. Things are going smooth. There hasn't been any hiccups yet. But let's address this at the end of the season when it really counts because this team wasn't put together with the idea of having the best record during the regular season. I think there's a lot of basketball to be played. I think the Clippers here are preparing for the long game here. Mm -hmm. And most important, I think when things are said, we're going to have to have a team or we're going to have to address the situation and say, how are they going to really succeed at the end of the season? I'm not buying into this. This is the happiest we've been. Yes, things have gone great thus far. No doubt about it. We have nothing to complain about. But you know what? I think there's going to be a lot of basketball to be played, and I think the Clippers are going to have something to say about that. I think everybody is right in their perspective. And, 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 and I think that LeBron actually has no choice but to be happy with his front office because he had developed a reputation as a guy that bullied front offices, and he can't afford to keep doing that because eventually people say, well, you know what the common denominator is? It's not Dan Gilbert. It's not Eric Spolster. It's not Pat Riley. It's you. And so... And so I think he has wisely satisfied himself with other things. His family, living out here in L.A., business is booming. Hmm. And so, but I think B.J.'s right that come May or June, right. depending mm -hmm. on what this exit looks like, if they get in there against the Clippers and it's 4-0 yeah. and, and all of a sudden everybody... Yeah. Skip Bayless, Jason Whitlock are <laughs> hammering LeBron James for the way they exited the playoffs. Yeah. He's not as happy. I, he has to have a sense. LeBron has been around this game long enough to know where things stand right now. Yes. He knows what they have. He knows what the Lakers have. And he knows that he's undergunned, undermanned right now. The really fascinating part is going to be if they indeed bring in Dion Waiters. Because Deion Waiters mm. was persona non grata in Cleveland. He and LeBron did not get along there. So if LeBron is making room for him, if this indeed comes off in the order to make this team better and it's all simpatico, that'll be very interesting for me to watch, just how much LeBron is willing to concede in order to make things better in the long run. But we got to respect that happiness as an emotion. Right. It's fluid. Uh, and it's based on perspective. So LeBron's not scared to be on an undermanned team because he won a championship. 
to the 73 win Golden State Warriors undermanned in comparison mm -hmm. to that team. What I think LeBron is starting to respect is, wow, I came to a team that last year, because of my injury and other situations, we didn't even make the playoffs. And look where we are right now. Oh, I'm happy. They steadied this ship. Youngsters got traded. Remember how dirty and nasty and ugly that guy, how that had an effect on this team? Magic Johnson not even telling LeBron, peace out, and left. And then you give me Anthony Davis, and we still have the best record in the West. You could say that we're not ready for mm -hmm. the imaginary Clippers, but I really have done this before. I've slayed Dragons before. So I think he's happy in part because of all the examples he's had in his career and his perspective of, this is the best setup I can ask for based on where I landed. I I'll say happiness is based on expectations more than perspective. And, and again, this is where I think everybody's right. His expectations in coming here to L.A., this was my narrative from day one. This ain't really about basketball. This is the Hollywood James experience. Mm. And I think the Hollywood James ex experiment is actually, in LeBron's calculus, going rather well. Yep. And so... He's relatively happy. I do, where again, when we get to May and June, though, and people are still talking about Mamba mentality, because trust me, nothing about this current setup would satisfy Kobe Bryant. And, and that's, people are going to start talking about what was really important to LeBron. His, did he match Kobe and Michael Jordan's killer instinct and competitive spirit? Once those conversations start happening, I think he'll be a little more frustrated than he is right now. Well, yeah, I mean, I think you made some excellent points here. But, again, I just want to say, at the end of the season, that's what we're all talking about here. Mm -hmm. And when you watch the L.A. Clippers, Lawrence Frank and company, mm -hmm. the general manager, they are in on every player. They have been in on every free agent. They've been in on every trade. They're in on players talking about getting bought, bought out and who are they going to acquire. And they've made it very clear that this organization is here to do one thing and win the championship. And that, to me, yeah. is the bottom line of the, what we're talking about here because we're not talking about who's going to be the best team during the regular season. Kawhi Leonard has made that very clear of what his goal is as he's playing in basketball. Kawhi Leonard now is clearly what we call a standalone player. He's been great in San Antonio. He's been great there in Toronto. And now... He is great there in the Clippers, and he's made them a team where you have to be and you have to respect them to say, this team can win the last game. Yeah. I, I just think it's a bottom-line decision of what we're talking about. <laughs> Kawhi is, if y'all know golf, Brooks Kepka. Like, I'm only here for the majors. Like, all the rest of that stuff. <laughs> y'all, y'all, oh, how many wins? 73? Congratulations. <laughs> I'm charged up when it matters most. And I tell you, man, like in life, when you, when, before you get drafted and after you get drafted, you start to learn that the people who are with you when you were down don't necessarily have to be with you when you're up. And this whole mama mentality is going to shift and pivot for LeBron to his benefit. Right. Because right now, emotionally, everyone's down because of the loss of Kobe. Mm. And LeBron is taking that weight. And he's doing Kobe's dunks. And everything is building equity to him. So when we say, do we really need LeBron to win us a championship? I think there's going to be a large population say LeBron handled this and held it down. So then going forward, maybe we'd be in that position, but not necessarily right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.